When it comes to upcoming rockets currently under development, the majority of the important ones seem to be shooting for the heavy or super heavy lift categories, which are defined as being able to lift between roughly 20 to 50 tons or over 50 tons respectively. The Relativity Terran R, ULA Vulcan, Ariane Space, Ariane 6, Blue Origins New Glenn, as well as the current industry leader SpaceX Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, all fall into the heavy lift category. The SpaceX Starship is going even bigger and hoping to dominate the entire industry with a super heavy lift rocket. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab's Neutron is aiming for the relatively emptier medium lift category with an initial planned capacity of 13 tons in partially reusable mode. Firefly Aerospace has been working with industry veteran Northrop Grumman to also develop a new medium lift rocket, which for now is called MLV. For a while, it's been assumed that these two would battle it out for supremacy in the medium lift rockets category. However, a new player has now entered the game and they have some extremely interesting ideas that could place them in contention despite being a much younger company with much less funding. Everyone seems to be talking about Stoke Space lately. It's so hot right now. With their CEO, Andy Lapsa, even winning Most Popular Aerospace CEO Vote Award on Twitter, beating out the likes of Peter Beck, Tori Bruno, Tim Ellis, and Elon Musk. Today, we are finally going to explore this small new startup and see whether they have what it takes to challenge Rocket Lab's Neutron for the medium lift crown in the future. Hey everyone, it's Dave. Thanks so much for tuning in. Happy Friday, and I hope you've had a good week. Today, I want to talk to you about an interesting new space startup called Stoke Space. They're looking to build out a medium lift rocket, which would be a competitor to Rocket Lab's Neutron. They're quite small and still early on in development, but they have some very big ideas that have caught the attention of a lot of people. It's very interesting, and there's a lot of excitement around this company right now, as you'll see in the rest of the video. Before we do dive into Stoke and compare it to Neutron a little bit and talk about the future of the medium lift launch space though, I do just want to ask you to hit subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have, then that like button and letting me know your comments down below always helps out with the algorithm as well. With that out of the way, let's dive into the exciting future of Stoke Space and their Nova rocket. Stoke Space was founded with the goal of solving a single problem developing a rocket system that can achieve full reusability. I know what you're thinking, isn't Starship already tackling that problem? And it is true, the SpaceX Starship is an extremely exciting system that is looking to achieve full reusability. However, Stoke is going about solving this problem in an extremely different way than SpaceX. Importantly, Stoke is assuming that Starship will be successful and plans for their own rocket to be viable in a world with Starship fully reusable launching regularly. If you've been following the rocket industry of late, then you should know reusing the first stage is pretty much a solved problem at this point. SpaceX has reused their Falcon 9 boosters hundreds of times by landing it propulsively back on drone chips or at the launch site. Rocket Lab has likewise been recovering their Electron first stages with plans for a first reuse very soon. Most up-and-coming commercial rockets at this point include first stage reuse as a necessity to be competitive on the commercial market. The big problem though is the second stage. This smaller part of the rocket has to go much faster in order to deliver payloads into orbit, making it much harder to survive atmospheric re-entry and have enough margins to carry the fuel required for a landing back on Earth with it. SpaceX is solving the re-entry problem by using ceramic heat tiles on their Starship, a similar method to how the space shuttle worked, but with an updated design and updated materials. 
When it comes to having enough margins to deliver meaningful payloads while still being able to carry enough fuel to recover the second stage and land it propulsively, SpaceX has solved that problem by just going bigger. Starship will be the largest rocket ever to reach orbit so they can afford to carry some more propellant and shielding on their second stage. Meanwhile, Rocket Lab's Neutron rocket will at least initially be taking the opposite approach. Their second stage will not be recovered, so instead they are optimizing it to make it as cheap and light as possible. This way, the loss of that stage is not as expensive. Now, this is where the interesting part comes in. Personally, I had come to the conclusion that the only way to have a reusable second stage and still deliver meaningful payloads to orbit was to go big like SpaceX is with Starship. But... Stokes Space thinks they have landed on a new way to recover their second stage while actually having a ro rocket that is significantly smaller in size than the Neutron, which is itself already 10 times smaller than Starship. How do they plan on accomplishing this, you might ask? Well, have you ever wondered how the metal of a rocket engine nozzle doesn't melt while undergoing the intense heat of launch? It's because super cold propellants are actually being flowed through the metal to actively cool it and prevent melting. You can see in this image here ice and frost forming on the outside of the engines during this process. As the everyday astronaut says, freezing on the outside while scorching on the inside. The heat shield for Stokes Nova rocket will work in a similar manner. Instead of flowing all the super chilled propellant straight into the turbo pumps and combustion chamber, they will be flowing some of it through the backside of their heat shield, continuously actively cooling the shield. They believe this will allow their vehicle to withstand the insane heat and pressure of atmospheric reentry without having to worry about the added issue of ceramic tiles. Let's take a listen to Stokes CEO Andy Lapsa as he talks about why he thinks ceramic tiles are not the ideal option. Yeah, it's not enough to just bring it back. It has to, if it's going to be rapidly reusable, it's got to land and fly as fast as possible. Our mental model is we want to turn this thing around in a day. Uh, so if you right. do that, you know, you have to think about at least as hard a, a, about what you cannot do as you think about what you can do in those 24 hours. And I guarantee you, if it's gonna, if it's gonna turn around in 24 hours, you're gonna be pretty damn busy restacking the vehicle, reintegrating payload, getting it back on the pad, refueling and flying, right? So there's absolutely yep. no time for inspections between flights. There's no time for refurbishment for sure. Um, and right. so this thing has to be bulletproof, right? Um, and so there's no inspections, there's no refurbishment. And because of that, you need, you need some re-entry method that's just bulletproof and uh, when we think about the traditional ways to bring something back from orbit there's really two one of them is the ablative heat shields that burn away between you know on the way in and and you know that's a perfectly robust system but it's just not reusable um right. so that's out and then the second thing is uh, you know kind of the ceramic tile solution that shuttle used x37 uses uh, starship is using first of all there's thousands and thousands of tiles on starship and shuttle and whatnot and every one of them yep. has to stay bonded so that's challenge number one and challenge number two is um please don't crack them right um don't <laughs> crack them from things like micro micrometeorites you know bird strikes on re-entry um even mundane things if you think about long service life you're gonna have you know technicians bumping them dropping wrenches, yep. whatever, right? And and what do you do then? The engines are going to okay? ignite at some of sort, like... <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. You're going to yeah. have debris. So what do you do then? I don't know. Are you happy going without inspecting? And my position is uh, you have to be happy to go without inspecting, right? You have to because right. these things will happen. It's inevitable. We cool engines regularly at, you know, the, the heat. Uh, the thermal environment in, in there is about 10 times higher than the thermal environment from re-entry. And so, you know, when you come from that world, the, the thermal challenge is not actually that hard. Um, and right. so we thought, wow, this is a very powerful uh, mechanism. Can we 
use that and extend it to the entire vehicle and do so in a way that's mass efficient enough. While this supercooled fuel is flowing through the heat shield, there will also be thrusters in a ring formation just behind the shield, which will allow them to fire for the second stage burn and re-entry burns, but also be protected by that all-important shield. Instead of angling the engines or gimbling them to steer like most rockets do these days, the Stoke Nova second stage will be able to steer by modifying how much thrust each individual nozzle will produce. When it comes to the rest of the vehicle, it will actually be pretty small relative to Neutron, something that took me by surprise because of the fact that they are shooting for full reusability, and also the primary criticism I generally see with the Neutron rocket it's, is that it's just too small for the modern space industry. They will also be aiming for a full-flow staged combustion engine on the first stage, which is an extremely efficient but also extremely complicated design and the same type as SpaceX's Raptor engine on the Starship. The internal goal for the first launch of the Nova rocket is in 2025, but I would absolutely take that with a whole heap of salt. While their progress has been quite impressive thus far, it's still a very small company with only 85 employees according to Wikipedia and a very long way to go. Personally, I would consider a 2027 launch date to be more reasonable, especially given the uniqueness of the design and the fact that they are going for a full flow stage combustion first stage engine. I would love to be proven wrong and be surprised by a 2025 launch of the Stoke Nova, though. Also, the company has only raised about $180 million so far across nine funding rounds. Space is an expensive business, and while $180 million might sound impressive, it's clear that they will need to raise much more capital in order to bring this vision to fruition. Competitor Relativity Space has already raised over $1.3 billion, with a company official quoted as saying that the majority of that is going towards their Terran R rocket development, and it may likely require additional capital raises as well. Rocket Lab is considered to be building Neutron on the cheap, but even they say that a price tag of $250 to $300 million will be required to get to the first launch and they have the advantage of already having many systems and facilities in place from their smaller electron rocket that can be transferred directly over to Neutron. Timeline is also a more important consideration than you might think. There's a huge demand pocket for medium and heavy launch coming around the 2025 time horizon as the United States government NSSL program Phase 3 kicks off. Amazon's Kuiper Mega Constellation will also be looking to get off the ground, and everywhere you look, there seems to be another company or government wanting to launch their own constellation. If Stoke does indeed take a couple extra years to get online, but Neutron is able to launch in 2025, Rocket Lab will have an advantage when it comes to securing these important and lucrative contracts, building out the flight heritage of the vehicle, building out those customer relationships and capturing millions in revenue, which can then be refunneled into future upgrades and expansion. The next few years will be a fascinating time for the space industry as we see no Neutron, Nova, and medium launch vehicle battle it out for supremacy in the medium launch category, while also proving that medium lift itself should continue to exist in an era where the massive Starship is coming online. So that's all I have for you today on Stokes Rocket and comparing it to the Neutron. It, it's an extremely interesting idea to shield their second stage re-entry in a new and novel way. Uh, the other thing that I found interesting was according to an article on CNBC, they're only taking about five tons to low earth orbit versus Neutron, which will be carrying 13 tons in partially reusable mode. So I have a feeling maybe they are 
are taking a bit of a hit carrying some extra propellant for cooling purposes that they wouldn't need just for that propulsive landing. So that's an interesting trade-off that's being made, whereas Neutron is trying to really optimize that second stage for lightness and cheapness and carry as much as possible in the rocket. I wouldn't necessarily say Neutron is dead in the water just because there's this plan for a fully reusable vehicle in the same segment. There are definitely different approaches and a lot of people out there are currently arguing that at this smaller scale and even at larger scales, it doesn't really make sense to reuse the second stage so much as just optimize for mass manufacturing and cheap manufacturing. So we're definitely going to see that debate play out in real time as these different philosophies go head to head over the next several years years. If you did find this video interesting, please do hit that like and subscribe button down below, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye for now.